That's what we like to hear. Well, this has been an amazing week for us. This has been the first time we've created the Clubhouse, which is this venue we're sitting in here, and this has afforded us an amazing opportunity to have some very intimate um, conversations where everybody feels involved about our love for the great game of baseball. And when you look at this country and the history of this country and its relationship to the game of baseball, there's one all too important chapter that we do our very best every year at FanFest to make fans aware of what happened. And a lot of that has to do with a great movie called The League of Their Own. How many people here have seen that movie, A League of Their Own? Well, as many of you know, that movie, A League of Their Own, was based on the players from the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to two players from that league. Please welcome Shirley Berkovich and Dr. Dolly Brumfield White. Folks, you're going to have an opportunity to participate in this discussion, and I really encourage you to take advantage of this, this intimate setting uh, to talk to these great ball players and great pioneers. They have so many stories, and I'm sure they're tired of hearing me ask the same questions over the years, so if you've got a, a unique one, I, I know that they'd love to hear it, but I do have to ask you this because everybody always wants to know it. Which one of you was Madonna's character based after in the movie? Okay. Yeah, it still works even with two. It's better when we have about seven of us, but no. That's, that is a common question that I'm, I'm sure you, you get, Dolly, which is how accurate is the film in portraying the, the league, the players, the, the characters, and, and all in all the feel of, of what was going on in your league at the time? Well, at that particular time, it was a strange time in history, as you well know. It's been a while since I've been here now. I can't really think about all these things. But, uh, I just wanted to know if, if, how accurate the movie was in reflecting the league. It was a time in history. If you want to get times in history, you go to dates. What was the dates that the movie was made? Anybody know? You're not students like you need to be. What was the date of World War II? Are you any better students at that time? The movie that we're talking about serves a, a period of time. The league in which we're talking, a league of their own, is from 1943 to 1954. That's a period of 12 years. And that's the time that we're really talking about. So what was happening in the lives of our citizens in our country, and particularly around the game of baseball at that particular time. And the movie actually is talking about the beginning of the league. Only the beginning, and not the whole 12 years. There is in works now some documentaries to talk about the whole 12 years, but the movie was only about the initial or first year. Okay? Shirley, when did you start to play in the league? When did you find out about the league, and then what was your what was the span of your career in the All American Professional Baseball? Well, I uh, was just played Sandlot ball with the boys and. Uh, on vacant lots and uh, uh, in the streets. So then there came a time when in the newspaper there was an article that said there was a, a tryout for the, uh, for the league and my brother was the one that saw it and he, he suggested that I come down and try out. But I was only 16 years old and I was kind of nervous and I thought I didn't want to go down there and try out with all these girls. But he encouraged me. He was only, he says, look, he says, well, just go sit in the stands and watch watch the game. And then he says, if you think you want to go down, then go down. So that's what I did. I sat there for a while, and then I thought to myself, gee, I think I could play. So I went down and tried out. Fortunately, they did too. Dolly, your, your introduction to the league, and uh, how did you get involved in and what years did you, you play for which teams? Well, let's go back away in time, a period in history that some of you were too young to even remember, but I hope you'll read about it. It was 1946. I'm in Mobile, Alabama, where I was born and raised. It was during the war time, it was right after the war. But Mobile was an, in, uh, a, an industry that supported World War II and the things that were going on. There were a lot of shipbuilding in World War II in Mobile, and also a big military base. Now, the men that worked on building the, what was called the Liberty Ships during World War II would come to the playground near where I lived and play 
baseball, that was their history. You know, the great thing about baseball, if you have a bat and a ball, you got a ball game. And so they would come to play. And one day they saw in a paper that there was going to be a girls baseball team having tryouts in a place called Pascagoula, Mississippi. You've probably never heard of it, but that's where the girls were having spring training that year, 1946. And they went to my parents and wanted to take me to try out. But my mother says, no, if you think she should go, I'll take her. So as the conditions of those days, we had to borrow my grandmother's car because my dad had to take the car to go to work. So we borrowed the car and my mother then drove me to Pasadena, Mississippi. But before that, she had to take me out of school. You know, mama can come in and take you out of school whenever she needs to. She needed to take me out of school to go try out for baseball. So we went down. Mr. Max Carey at that time was president of the, of the baseball league, and he was the one that I tried out for. And uh, anytime you try out, they want to know do you have the skills for the game, the hitting, running, throwing, these types of things. So after I had done those for Mr. Carey, he uh, said, well, how old are you? It took me all that time to figure out how old I was. I said, I'm 13, but I'll soon be 14. Well, he says to my mother, says, Ms. Brumfield, we don't take the girls this young. Mother said, I didn't want you to take her. I want to know what you thought. So that was in April. Then in June of that year, because I had no organized ball experience, there were no nothing for girls at that particular time. So in June, he wrote a letter to my parents and wanted me to come to Chicago to be put on a, a team for the experience. And my parents says, no, no, not this time. So over the period then of that uh, spring and into the winter, another girl who played in the league was Margie Coberson. She made the league that year and she began pitching for the Rockford Peaches, a team that you probably have heard about. Margie then, over that winter, came out, met me, met my parents, told them about the chaperones that the league had so that young girls could go and play away from home and be protected. And so when it came time then that I got a, a letter, I think it was in November of that year, inviting me to go to Havana, Cuba, of all places. Havana, Cuba, for spring training, 1947. And so with Margie's help as my chaperone and on the train ride from Mobile to Miami, uh, got me a chance to go to Havana and have spring training. And during that period of spring training then, I evidently got the attention of someone, probably Mr. Carey. And so at the end of spring training, each team has a way to pull out from a pool of players the people they want to add to their roster. And I was thankfully asked to join the South Bend Blue Sox in 1947, which was my rookie year in the league. And that then is how I got to be in the All-American League. Now, surely a lot of you wonder if it was actually professional ball. 